It's Monday, August 11th, 2025, and we officially have a tropical storm Aaron in the Atlantic Ocean, right there in the main development region. It's about 1,700 miles to the east of the Caribbean islands right now. If we come over to the WeatherWise app, we have this new free sector. You can look at the satellite on WeatherWise for free. We can now see the whole main development region, and you can see tropical storm Aaron over here looking pretty healthy this morning. There was a big convective blow up last night, increased the wind speeds a little bit, uh, but now we're starting to see a little bit more of the rotational aspect of the storm as it moves farther to the east. Now, right now it's got winds around 46 miles per hour, wind gusts up to 58 miles per hour, and the minimum pressure is 1,004 millibars. But watch what happens on the NHC forecast the farther west it goes. As soon as, just a couple days from now, it could be a category one hurricane with 98 mile per hour wind gusts. And all the way out here, uh, about five days from now, we expect this to intensify all the way up to a category three major hurricane out here uh, north of Puerto Rico. Now this is still like close to 3,000 miles away from the United States so nobody really knows how this is going to affect uh, the states but it's getting to the point to where we can say pretty confidently that it's probably not going to affect Puerto Rico or many of the islands down here very significantly. It's the farther west you go that's where we are more concerned potentially in the Bahamas and of course Florida and the southeast coast of the United States. This is something that we have to watch but you can see here on our spaghetti models most of them are pretty well aligned until we get to about right here when is this this is a Saturday August 16th pretty sure that the storm is going to continue to go in this direction until right then and then things start to spread out a little bit notice how uh, some of the models take it a little bit farther to the south like the HFBI here has a category 5 hurricane north of Puerto Rico on Sunday August 17th and a lot of the the stronger storms stay a little bit farther south South and have that more westerly trajectory to their path. But notice how some of the weaker ones uh, are curling up to the north a little bit. So this is where we don't know what's going to happen yet. There's a very good chance that this stays a fish storm and it goes out to sea and it doesn't really impact anybody. Maybe Bermuda. We'll talk about that when we get there. But there is still a chance that uh, this goes right on up towards the Bahamas, maybe even the east coast of the United States. It all depends on how strong the high pressure is out here in the middle of the Atlantic. So these are our main hurricane models, and it takes us out uh, over the next seven to 10 days. Most of these do about six, seven days, but there's a couple that'll go out to 10 days. And you can see that they all start turning a little bit, but how much are they gonna turn? That's the question that we still have to answer. Now let's take a look at a different set of spaghetti models. Uh, this is coming from the GEFS ensembles, and it's a very similar story. Like all the way up to about right here, we're pretty confident in the path of the storm, but things start spreading out significantly the farther into the future that we go. Look at AP20. This is just one of the very many members of this model ensemble. It says on Tuesday, August 19th, we're going to have a storm way out here in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, not impacting anyone, and it's going to be a weak storm. But look at this. Down here, AP19, another member of the same model suite, has a Category 2 hurricane over here near the Bahamas on August 19th. So anything in between those two points is going to be possible. And the farther south and the farther west this goes, the more likely it is that we're going to see some sort of impacts over here on the east coast of the United States. But no matter what anybody tells you, this is all we know right now. Nobody has any better guidance or insight into what's going to happen with this hurricane. This is it. Okay, so looking at the ensembles is a pretty good approach to forecasting where this storm's going to go. But just for fun, let's take a look at the deterministic GFS and just see what this one model run shows as we go into the future. This is Saturday, August 16th, around 8 p.m. It shows a pretty strong storm, a hurricane over here north of Puerto Rico, and it is starting to have that little bit more of a northerly turn to it. Let's go into the future a little bit more. How about Monday, August 18th, around 11 a.m. Eastern? You can see that we have a very strong storm here south of Bermuda, but well off of the east coast of the United States, and it's almost going due north at this point. And uh, yeah, the deterministic GFS says that there's going to be a trough that kind of comes down out of Canada that magnetizes the storm up towards it and keeps it away from the United States. And that's one of the many possibilities that uh, do exist. So this is something that we're going to hope for because this would mean less people get impacted by a very strong storm. I think that it's uh, pretty certain that this is going to become a major hurricane. I think that this is going to
going to be a very strong storm and it would probably be quite detrimental if it were to make landfall in the state. So we're going to hope that that doesn't happen. And we're about to dive much deeper into that. But first, let's shout out today's awesome sponsor. Sundays for Dogs, fresh dog food made easy. A lot of you guys might not know this, but I'm a huge dog lover. My wife and I have had our dog Luna since 2019 and she's the star of the show around the weather house. And you know, we're always searching for the best food for her. And Sundays has given us that for Luna. Sundays is fresh dog food made from human grade ingredients, 100% meat muscle, organs and superfoods, and zero synthetics or artificial preservatives. Sundays has cleaner ingredients than frozen dog foods, but you can just pour it right from the bag because it's shelf stable. Once we made the switch to Sundays, we could tell Luna loved it immediately. Luna was a little bit of a picky eater before, but now she comes running when she hears the bag. The whole family agrees with her excitement. I think this is the best decision we've made for her health. Why don't you give your dog the chance to fall in love with Sundays as well? All you got to do is click that link in the description. You're going to get 50% off your first order by clicking that link, going right here to uh, sundaysfordogs.com slash Ryan Hall, or you can just use my code Ryan Hall at checkout, and that's going to get you 50% off your first order. So yeah, it's good stuff. If you got a dog, go check it out. Or if you know somebody with a dog, send this to them. I think they're really going to like it. So link in the description. Thank you, Sundays, for sponsoring this video and making Luna so happy. Now let's get back into the video. Okay, so let's do a rundown real quick. Here are the things that we need to know about Aaron. It's currently a tropical storm in the Atlantic Ocean and it's very far from land. It is going to slowly strengthen over the next two days and then that's when we're going to look for rapid intensification. If it survives for the next two days and it's a category one hurricane and it enters the more warm uh, waters that are present over here closer to the uh, Caribbean islands, then we have to really watch out for rapid intensification where this can become a category three, four, or five very very quickly. There is no immediate threat to land, but the uh, Caribbean islands should stay alert, Bermuda, and even the southeastern portions of the United States. We need to be watching this one. Remember, it is currently peak hurricane season. August through September is notorious for having big hurricanes, so it wouldn't be uh, abnormal for this to be a big hurricane that does make landfall in the United States. That would not be something that uh, is crazy and, and we shouldn't even consider. You know what I mean? So make sure you're not scared and rather prepared. So we're going to be talking about that tropical storm uh, probably every day <laughs> for the next two weeks. Uh, but we have other stuff going on as well, including a day four slight risk of severe weather over here in North Dakota, Minnesota, and a little bit of South Dakota. This is a 15% probability right now, which is equivalent to about a slight risk of severe weather or a two out of five over here for Thursday, August 14th, 2025. And it's this same area that's been getting hit hard over and over again uh, this summer. And let me show you what's driving it. It's the same thing that's been driving and everything else uh, this summer up here. It's extreme instability. We're going to have CAPE levels, convective available potential energy levels up there close to 4,000 joules per kilogram, which is a lot. It means that we're going to have a significant amount of energy out here for the storms to feed off of, and it means that uh, they could produce large hail, damaging winds, maybe even a tornado or two. But what I find interesting is if we pull this off uh, to the future a little bit into Friday, notice how we have even more instability available down here in Iowa and southern portions of Minnesota. This is interesting. I don't know if there will be any sort of fronts or outflow boundaries that interact with this, but if there are, this could lead to some more severe weather on Friday over here. And another thing that's going to be happening up here is a bunch of rain. Okay, so we're going to have potentially two to four inches of rain over the next couple of days from St. Cloud over to Green Bay. And it does look like there's going to be some more rain around Milwaukee, uh, but thankfully nowhere near uh, what we saw the other day where we had the tremendous flash flooding uh, uh, last night and through parts of yesterday morning, it was absolutely plum wild. Uh, Milwaukee will have a more full update on that situation in a future video. I'm just kind of in tropical mode right now. The water should continue to recede and uh, we're not going to have any more problems like that anytime soon over here with some of these places that have just been devastated by flooding here recently. But intermittent heavy rain showers are on the way. Now, another place that's still reeling from flooding that happened uh, a while ago, maybe up to five inches of rain is going to be possible over the next week or so around Asheville. If any of that comes down very quickly, it could cause flash flooding. And that's kind of what we expect uh, today. There's going to be lots of those uh, pop-up summertime pulse thunderstorms that hit and miss uh, a bunch of different places. You can be in Asheville and get a thunderstorm today and then in uh, Hendersonville and not get anything. But if the right one parks over you for enough 
time. There's enough uh, precipitable water down here to produce maybe one to three inch per hour rainfall rates, and that could lead to flooding, especially today specifically along the coasts. So down here between Myrtle Beach and Savannah, Georgia, get ready for some big time rainfall rates. Also down here along the coast of Florida, where yesterday around Tampa, we had some crazy flooding, and I don't think it'll be like that again, but more heavy downpours are going to be possible this time more closer to Panama City and stuff like that. Speaking of heavy downpours today, uh, we expect plenty of them uh, to be uh, possible over here from the panhandle of Texas up into Oklahoma. So get ready for some isolated flash flooding up there as well. And you can see that the Weather Prediction Center has all these areas highlighted in slight risks of excessive rainfall and flash flooding. Once again, Myrtle Beach, Wilmington, you guys are included in this, Panama City to Pensacola, you guys are included. And then of course, Tulsa, Oklahoma City, Lubbock up towards Joplin. You guys are also under the gun for some isolated flash flooding problems today. Now, outside of the rain and the potential tropical concerns, everybody else is going to be dealing with this, more heat. <laughs> unless you're on the West Coast, unless you're in Los Angeles or up there by Seattle, for the next 10 days or so, we expect uh, another big heat dome to kind of park over the central U.S. and slowly propagate over towards the east. And this is going to lead to uh, very warm temperatures in the plains over into the Great Lakes and into the east coast. Uh, we're going to see lots of places with temperatures over 100 degrees. And once again, this takes place between six days from now and 10 days from now. So essentially for the next 10 days, we're going to be baking out here in the red and dark red areas. All right, that's pretty much all the weather talk I have for you today. Um, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're probably going to have daily updates on our tropical storm, Aaron, especially if it continues to look like it might eventually impact the United States. We will be the first to let you know if there's anything to be concerned about right now. There isn't. Okay, so that's pretty much all I got for you. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.